Welcome to Sparks of History, where Jewish history and world history meet. We are extremely pleased to have with us today Rabbi Moshe Bamberger, an acclaimed speaker and writer. Rabbi Bamberger currently serves as the Mashkiach Ruchani of Beis Medrash Litalmud at Lander College for men in New York City. Rabbi Bamberger studied under the late Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach, a blessed memory, at Yeshiva Kol Torah in Jerusalem, at Yeshivas Or Achaim, and at Mesifta Yeshiva Rabbi Chaim Berlin, where Rabbi Bamberger received his rabbinic ordination. Rabbi Bamberger has authored several volumes of original commentary on Tanakh, titled Shiras Halevi. Additionally, Rabbi Bamberger is also the author of the very popular Great Jewish series published by Art School Publications. These include Great Jewish Speeches, Great Jewish Letters, Great Jewish Journeys, Great Jewish Faith, Great Jewish Inspiration, Great Jewish Wisdom, and Great Jewish Photographs. And today we will be discussing Rabbi Bamberger's absolutely fascinating Great Jewish Treasures, a collection of precious Judaica associated with Torah leaders. And um, it's actually a wonderful book. It was very hard to pick which topics because each topic has its own story and, and urge all our viewers and listeners to uh, go online as I did and uh, purchase uh, at least Great Jewish Treasures if not more, by Rabbi Bamberger. Rabbi Bamberger, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it very much. I really appreciate you having me. It's a, a big habit to be here. I've seen the roster of uh, very illustrious uh, guests that you've had, and uh, if my name could even be in a very small font under theirs, that would be a, a tremendous plus. It's, it's, it's our pleasure and honor. Um, just, just to get started, Rabbi Bamberger, how did you come about researching and writing Great Jewish Treasures. So Great Jewish Treasures was, I believe, the fourth book in the series. Uh, so it was sort of, at that point in the series, it was already uh, not such a, uh, you know, a, a, an unusual thing to, to start writing a book. It was more like continuing the process of exploration of the lives of Gedol Yisrael, the great rabbinic leaders of the past thousand years, from different angles. So we started uh, about um, I don't know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, with a book called Great Jewish Letters, uh, we, which really uh, went into depth of uh, the, the letters, the correspondences that the great leaders had with each other, or the open letters that they wrote. Some of them were very powerful. Um, for political reasons or for emotional reasons, for uh, and we got a glimpse into the hearts of the Gedolim through those letters and uh, not just their scholarship, which we study in their actual the books that they've written, but through your through the letters that that they've written, uh, we get to see like a real part of their personality, a powerful uh, illustration of who they were and what made them tick and 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 their uh, their heart. Uh, after that, we went on to Great Jewish Speeches, uh, which was the, the the speeches that they made, the drushes that they that they delivered uh, at different occasions, and that was also I, I found that very fascinating. Then we went, uh, we did a little book on wisdom, which was the uh, the quotes, and then uh, we came to Great Jewish Treasures. Now, Great Jewish Treasures was really something that was very near and dear to my heart because uh, my father, a blessed memory. Uh, Mr. Bjorn Bamberger, uh, Svi Halevi Bamberger, was a, uh, a very avid collector of Judaica, and he had a large collection, a large library of both books and and actual objects of Kedalim, primarily of German Jewry, um, the leaders of German Jewry, because we are, uh, we hail from there. My great grandfather was the famed uh, Ripsuk Dev Halevi Bamberger, the Wurzburger Rav. And we have a lot of uh, collections of uh, of his svarim, his manuscripts, and his his items. So, and and my father used to take me when I was a young boy to the auctions, the Judaica auctions in Sotheby's and Kestenbaum. It was very exciting to feel the electricity in the air as huge numbers were being uh, offered for these uh, these unique and rare items. 
And so I guess I had it almost by osmosis in my blood. And uh, I wanted to write a book uh, on the treasures, on the artifacts of the G'dayim. It's a, I don't think it's ever really been done uh, before in this way. Uh, we did these books, all of them very lavishly, thank God, you know, full color. Uh, many of them are coffee table books and, um, you know, at great cost and great uh, investment. But it came out really beautifully, if I must say so myself. You you said it yourself. So uh, this was uh, the idea behind this book was not just to find uh, just random objects that were owned by rabbis. The the primary focus of the book was to find iconic pieces that through those pieces you'd be able to understand a little bit more about the rabbi and what made him unique amongst rabbis. Not all rabbis are are the same, right? Every rabbi has his own contribution to make, uh, has his own midas, has his own uh, love of certain things or what he's famous for. And a lot of that, if you look carefully, could be expressed through the objects, through the Judaica that they owned. And that's what I was trying to bring about. Like you said, there was, it's not just the pictures, the beautiful pictures of the objects, but it's the stories that these pictures tell. I don't know if you had it when you were a child, when, when I had it, when I was a child, it was a big thing to have show and tell. And you brought into school something and, or, or the Rebbe brought into school something. And as soon as he brings in, it could be a shifer, it could be a pair of tefillin, it could be a, you know, a coin from the basic mixture. As soon as you bring in an object, the lesson goes from being very abstract to very real. And that's what I try to bring about through this book, that you could actually almost touch the gadol or touch the message that his life uh, was really uh, trying to convey.